By the end of World War I, Footscray had forged its own distinct identity. Footscray became home to workers grinding out a living. While outsiders turned their nose up at the joint and its industrial smells, the residents developed a fierce sense of pride in their community. This confident blue-collar suburb welcomed people prepared to put in the hard yards. Among them were members of the Aboriginal community, many of whom were leaving missions across Victoria and New South Wales in search of a new life. William Cooper, a Yorta Yorta leader, was one of these new arrivals. Kimberly Moulton is Cooper's great-great-niece. Kimberly, this uh, street we're walking down, it's very important in your family. Why is it important in your family? Um, my great uncle William Cooper moved to this street in Footscray in around 1933. Uncle William was living at Cummeragunja Mission. And Cummeragunja Mission, you know, at that time was a very oppressive place for Aboriginal people. And it was a, a sense of community there because they were all there together, but there was also a lot of oppression and brutality happening. Missions were created by churches in the 19th century to train Aboriginal people in Christian ideals. Conditions at Kumaragunja were appalling and the residents were denied basic human rights. Cooper never forgot his treatment there. After arriving in Footscray, he decided to devote the rest of his life to activism. This is where he established, along with others, the Australian Aborigines League. The Australian Aborigines League was a political group that was to petition for the rights and equality for our people. Mm -hmm. Really, they were just asking for the same rights to be afforded to our people, to Aboriginal people, um, as Australians had, you know, at that time. And they wanted representation of our people in Parliament. <laughs> and it's pretty simple, really, isn't it? <laughs> it like... is amazing. <laughs> Cooper saw an opportunity to grab some media attention. January the 26th, 1938, marked the 150th anniversary of the arrival of the first fleet. While the Europeans celebrated, Cooper, along with other Aboriginal leaders, organised a protest. They called it the Day of Mourning. It was the first Aboriginal civil rights protest in Australia. What they did was so important in terms of the political movement for our people, um, but it's so important to Australian history. Yeah. And it's important to local history, so the history of Footscray. And there's the house there. It's hard to imagine that things that began in that house we're still talking about today. I know. You know, it was at a time where they had very little rights of their own, and I think if they can, you know, or could have done it back then, we can continue to do it now, and we still have a long way to go. Um, but thinking of our old people and, and their fight, I think really puts the fire in the belly for our people today. Cooper believed equality to be a universal human right. When the news reached him of an atrocity on the other side of the world, he knew he had to act. On November the 9th, 1938, Hitler unleashed a series of violent attacks against the Jews. Thirty thousand men were rounded up and dumped into concentration camps. It became known as Crystal Nacht, or Night of Broken Glass. In Footscray, Cooper immediately wrote a letter to the German government demanding a stop to the persecution. On the 6th of December, 1938, at the age of 77, he walked to the German consulate to deliver the letter. Exactly 80 years later, the Jewish community has gathered at his house to remember his act of humanity. We're going to retrace the footsteps of Uncle William Cooper. We are so honoured that you're here. The march is being led by Cooper's grandson, Uncle Boydie. Your grandfather was a remarkable man. What can you remember about William Cooper? Oh, I remember that he was uh, busy every day writing letters. If he wasn't writing letters, he was walking into Melbourne and he never come outside the gate unless he had a tie on. And did you spend a lot of time in this house? Yes. My job was to open the door when he was 
in his sick bed, yeah. couldn't go out, so they used to come here and have the meetings in the bedroom. What do you think the march today represents? I went to Israel. Yeah. All the Jews knew the story, and he didn't. Uh, they didn't know the story here in Melbourne. So we decided to do something about that. Well, William Cooper's legacy really makes you weak at the knees because he was a person who was trying to get the Aboriginal Advancement League together in his house around the corner. And he took time out from his work there to protest the Nazis' treatment of the Jews in Germany. No wonder he's accorded hero status in Israel. In 1938, Cooper led a small delegation. Today, outside the former German consulate, it's a very different story. Look at the crowd that's come today to commemorate, to celebrate, to reinforce the idea that we have to take on the world's humanitarian problems. Here was a man in Footscray who lifted his gaze from Footscray to the world and saw what was happening in Germany and decided to do something about it. William Cooper died in 1941, but his unrelenting pursuit of equality inspired a whole new generation of activists. In 1962, the Commonwealth Government gave the right to vote in federal elections to all Aboriginal people. At the end of World War II, Europe was devastated. Millions were on the move and Australia was the destination of many. It would change the face of Footscray forever. <laughs> 